Hi, I'm James Ward, a platform evangelist at Salesforce. I want to walk you through how to do continuous delivery with Heroku and GitHub. I'm going to start from scratch. So I'm logged into GitHub, and first thing I'm going to do is create a new repository. And we'll call this one Hello Heroku. And create it. Okay, now that I have a repository, I want to start creating some files in that. Easy way to do that is just to put slash new slash master here and now we can start creating an app. Uh, usually I do this locally and then push my repository up to Heroku but wanted to just keep everything in the cloud for this example so let's create a new file. I'm going to be using Python and Flask, really simple web framework for Python. So the first thing that I need to do is create a requirements.txt file and this file defines what the dependencies of our application are. So now I can say that uh, we need Flask version 0 0.11 and then let's just commit this file. Then we're going to create another new file here. This one will be our web app, so we'll call that one web.py. I'm going to start by saying from Flask import Flask. Then I'm going to create my app so that's just a new Flask app. And then I'm going to set up a route. So we'll say at app.route. And this will be a route for slash. Then I'm going to have a function. We'll call it index. And this is just going to return a string. Hello world. Okay. So there's our little Flask app. So let's go down and commit that. Then last file we need is a file that will tell Heroku how to run the app. So this is a file called a proc file. And now we're going to say that the web process is uh, going to run the Flask app. So first thing we need to do is set Flask underscore app an environment variable here equal to that web.py that we created. And then we're going to run Python minus M, run Flask, run, and then we're going to specify a couple parameters here. Host equals 0, .0, .0, 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 and the port equals dollar sign port because Heroku is going to give us the port to listen on as an environment variable port. Okay, so let's commit that new file. Great, so now we've got our repo, it's got our Flask app in it, and now Heroku will know how to start up the web process. So let's go over into Heroku and create a new app. It's going to be a personal app. I'm going to leave the app name blank, hit create app. This just creates a blank application for us. And now we can go in and deploy that application from GitHub to this app. So I've already uh, connected to GitHub from my Heroku account. So I just need to come in here and search for my repo. And we'll see that somewhere in here we'll have that hello Heroku one. So let's connect that. And uh, first part of continuous delivery setup will be to enable automatic deploys. So now whenever there's a change on master, it's going to automatically deploy that uh, out to this application. You can see that I can tell it to wait for continuous integration to pass before it does a deploy. So if you're using Travis or Jenkins, uh, something like that, then Heroku is not going to deploy that if like the tests have failed. Okay, so uh, next thing is just to deploy the master branch for the first time here. So you'll see that a Python app has been detected. It's installing Python 2.7.12, and then it's going to install the Flask dependencies using that requirements.txt file. And then it will package up uh, everything that's needed to run this app into a, what Heroku calls a slug file and then deploy that out onto a dyno where now it'll be up and running. So now we should be able to open up this app that was just created and deployed and we see there our hello world. Okay, so that's all great. We've got our app up and running on Heroku, but now let's walk through the other steps that we would use for a real continuous delivery pipeline. So I've got my app, it's automatically deploying. This would be a great staging application where we could see changes that are on master. But we probably want a production application in our continuous delivery pipeline. So what I'm gonna do is go create uh, a new app here and we'll um, just let it assign a name for us. 
and then uh, this app will be our production application and our other app will be our staging application. So the way that we tie these together into a continuous delivery pipeline is by creating a new pipeline and yep we'll create that pipeline leave it with that uh, weird obscure name there and uh, then this will become our production application. You'll see, there we go. And now we want to add uh, another app, which was that dry beach one, as our staging application. So you'll see that uh, it knows that, all right, our dry beach staging application was deployed about a minute ago, and then our production application doesn't have anything deployed yet. And so let's go ahead and do a manual promotion from staging to production. So here we go, let's do that promotion. It's already built that application, so the actual promotion to production happens pretty quickly. There we go, it's now up and running. So if we go to our production application, this obscure one, then uh, let's open it up here, then we see the same thing, hello world. Okay, so that's great. We've got the start of a continuous delivery pipeline here. Um, but the next thing that we want to do is have a way to review changes as part of this continuous delivery pipeline. So this is what Heroku calls review apps. So let's go and set up review apps here for our application. So we'll go to our staging app. And now in deploy we can come in here and say, oh, we need to go to actually the production application. So let's go to the, to the production app, not the staging app. And now what we can do is enable review apps here. So now I'm going to enable review apps. To do that, I need a descriptor file called an app.json. So let's go ahead and create the app.json here. And we can specify some, some parameters uh, about this, but you'll see that, that there's the the file that we're adding into the repository that just tells Heroku a little bit of information about how these review apps get created. Okay, great. So that file is created. If we go back to GitHub and refresh here, we should see, there we go, there's that app.json that was created. Okay, so now let's enable review apps for pull requests automatically. What this does is anytime there's a new pull request created on that GitHub repository, it's going to create an app on Heroku that has the changes in the pull request. So let's go ahead and enable that. Okay, so review apps are now enabled. That's great. So the next thing we need to do to be able to see this is go create a pull request. So let's go over to our GitHub repository, and I'm going to do this all in GitHub, but uh, obviously in the real world you would probably have a local development environment set up. You would make your changes on a branch, push that branch, and, and do the pull request that way. But I'm going to take a little shortcut. I'm going to just go to my web.py here in GitHub, and I'm going to edit this and change world to James. Hello, James. And now instead of committing these changes directly to the master branch, I'm going to create a new branch and propose a file change, which allows me to create a pull request. So we can go see the pull request details there, just like usual on GitHub. Let's create that pull request. Okay, so now that we have the pull request created, you'll see that James Ward has requested a deployment uh, of this dry beach application. So it says that that's pending because Heroku is off now and creating a whole new application with these changes so that I can test these changes on Heroku, see what the changes are going to look like before I decide to merge those changes into master and then have them deploy to staging. Okay, so it looks like that change was deployed. Let's go check out that change here in a browser. So we can see that's our production app name and then dash PR dash one. And there we go, we see our change. So that, that looks great. So let's go back to the pull request and usually a team member would review this and then merge it. But since I'm by myself, I'm just gonna merge that myself. So let's confirm and merge and great. So now uh, what you'll see is that Heroku will uh, delete the, the review app since it's no longer needed. And it, the master change is being, uh, the, is being deployed to the staging environment and so that'll build we can check out the build log see it's just about done here and it's going to launch that and then we'll be able to see that change up and running on our 
uh, on our staging app, that dry beach one. So that looks great. Our production application, if we go refresh this and make sure, yep, that still has the previous change because we haven't promoted this change to production yet. So let's go ahead and do that. Looks like uh, we're all ready to go to production. So let's promote this change to production. And so that'll take that built version of the application and now deploy that out to the production app. And now if we go refresh the production app, then of course we see the change there. So that's the continuous delivery pipeline with Heroku and GitHub. And uh, I use this all the time for the apps that I build and uh, really love how easy it makes to, to test and verify changes and move them through a pipeline to production. Thanks for watching.